Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sum 8 by Turn Up Games. The game plays one or two players, takes roughly 30 minutes to play, and is for ages 8 and up. In the game Sum 8, you are playing an abstract strategy game where you are attempting to place these tiles down onto a board, or a grid I should say, and attempting to score points with each tile that you place down. You'll be creating points by making circles, and of course big 8s, and you'll get one, two, or even four points for each of the different measures that you take when placing down a tile. You'll get a certain number of tiles that you'll have hidden, kind of like the game Dominoes, and you'll be placing them down on this grid here. Once the entire board is filled, or when no one else can play tiles anymore, you're going to basically remove all the pips as negative points that you have left over uh, attached to your main score, which will create your final score, and whoever has the most points by the game's end is the winner of sum 8. Let's explain how to set the game up, how to play Play, and then my review. Setting a game up of Sum 8 is actually rather simple, and you're going to be able to do the easy mode, hard mode, or custom mode. And what I have here is the hard mode, but only because it takes up less space. What you'll do first is you'll take nine tiles and create a three by three grid of these tiles, placing the half circles adjacent to each other to form full circles. So when you get these two tiles here, you place them like this, it creates a circle, and you're going to be putting it in a three by three grid, just like this here, as you can see. Then you'll take all the rest of the tiles here. You'll shuffle them up and place them into piles or stacks or whatever as long as they're face down and then you'll get rid of any of the remaining tiles that are placed on the ground. After that, each player is going to take eight tiles to form their hand. Now remember, nobody can see these tiles except the player who grabs them. And after they have grabbed their eight tiles, then they're going to begin by choosing a starting player. And the starting player is going to place one of their tiles down. And the way you choose a starting player is both players will grab one of these uh, tiles here from the remaining uh, portion, and whoever has the higher pip value on that tile will get to go first, and then you'll go ahead and randomly put these back so that nobody knows where they were inside these tiles here. And then you'll begin the game with that first starting player placing a tile down, or of course, uh, and of course following that up with moving tiles and placing tiles down in the game Sum 8. Okay, so we selected our starting player. Now this player has three different options when placing the first tile down, and this is a rule for only the first tile. They can either A, place a tile down that has the total sum on both sides to equal eight. So a six and a two, that equals eight, and scores two points. Another option is they could go ahead and place a tile down that has got the same total pips on each side, so a one and a one, and that would score them one point. And then the other option is they could play a tile that neither equals up to eight nor are matching, and you would score nothing for that. So it's a way of giving the first player uh, bonus points at the beginning of the game. When that first player is placed, and they can place in any of these little areas here on these little grids here. You can see that there's four different spaces. And remember that when you place down, if you place down to an adjacent circle, then this is going to have a number connection. And number connections can go up to the right. Um, so they can go in two different directions, or if they're all by themselves, they're just going to have one direction. So this player will go ahead and place right here, right in smack dab in the middle of the board. Whenever a player plays a, a tile, they'll go ahead and choose a new tile and place that into their hand. Then the next player is going to get a chance to go. In clockwise order, or there's only two players, hey, you'll, you'll be able to place another tile down. Now, in order to place a tile, it must be like with like. So for instance, a five must be attached to another five or you have to make the sum total of eight. So for instance, if I wanted to, let's see if I have an example here, I could instead play, instead of this five here, I could play a three, a five and a three, that's gonna be eight points, in which I would score two points. Whenever you make an eight total sum, a connection, you're gonna get two, and whenever you match a like sum of two and a two, or a four and a four, you get one point. And after playing a tile, they will go ahead and draw another tile. When you play down these tiles, you may never place a tile away all by itself apart from the tiles that have been placed. After that first tile is placed, everything else must connect. If I wanted to, I could also on my turn move instead of place a tile down. Um, and the movement's pretty simple. You're allowed to take any piece you want and move it to any other space as long as it connects to the main game board or the main tile structure, but you cannot leave a piece hanging. So for instance, here's some correct movements. I could take this one here and move it somewhere else on the board, provided that it includes the sum of eight or of course that uh, it has matching sides. But I could not take the middle, this one here, because it separates these two tiles. Another thing I could not do is take this one here because it separates this tile. So 
movement is kind of regulated as to where you can remove. An additional thing too is once a circle has been completed, you may not take a tile and move it away from that circle. And in addition to that, once you've moved a tile from one location to another, it may not be moved back to the previous location on the previous turn. So it's every other turn a tile can be moved back into that same location, but it's not likely going to happen all that much. And that being said, that's basically how you play the game. You're going to be placing down tiles, scoring one point for matches uh, and two points for getting a total sum of eight. And in addition, whenever you play a total big eight. So whenever you make a full circle, it locks. And then when you make another full circle, the moment you make that extra full circle, you get a bonus of four points. And of course, in addition, if you made two of them, so if you had two circles filled in and you finished one, that would score you four and four points, in addition to whatever it is you matched with your tile. And um, that's pretty much the style of the game. Go back and forth, playing down tiles and matching until a player can no longer play or all players can no longer play their tiles or you have played all the tiles in the stack. And you'll total up your points uh, for each of the times that you match. What not, I would suggest getting a piece of paper and a pencil and writing down these things for each of your turns. You're going to subtract the total amount of pips in your hand, just like I think you would in dominoes. So if I had, I don't know, just these two tiles left at the end of the game, I'd have a three and a five, which is eight, and a five and a two, which is seven, 15 points, negative to my total score. And if I have the most points, in sum eight, I win. So sum eight is all about making connections. You either want to make those likes or you want to make those totals of, well, summing up to eight. And of course, big eights. Creating these big eights is going to score you four points. And like I said, if you can do a double big eight, that's amazing. So if you got one here, one here, and you take this one and place it here, oh, I'm a like and a like, a like and a like, that's two points. Plus I just made an eight here and an eight here. That's four and four more, which is a total of 10 points on a turn. That is massive. And you can score a ton of points there. And most likely your opponents are going to do everything everything in their, in their power to humanly, uh, everything humanly possible to stop you from being able to do that because you will make a boatload of points pulling that off. Just scoring points in three different connections is going to be very good. Like for instance, uh, connecting two different places where you can get one here, one here, one here, one here, and one here, and one here. You can get like four points just placing one tile down without even making a big eight, or I should say four different possibilities of points. Um, and of course this game is a little bit about luck too. You might not have a tile that you can play currently. You might have to kind of deem a different strategy up of oh, where you want to move a tile to, uh, all while trying to make sure you're not creating any islands of tiles. You want to make sure that they're always going to be connect connected in this game. There's a lot of thought and strategy as to placing tiles down. You only have a certain number of these different tiles, much like dominoes, in order to secure your placement on the board. And trying to get rid of those big pip tokens or tiles at the very end of the game is going to be important. Most likely you're going to run out of tiles uh, to play before actually running out of tiles in this game. And so leaving yourself with the ones that have the lowest number of pips is going to be best for you to score less negative points uh, than your opponent especially if they score more points than you during the game, but you choose to kind of reduce your hand size more than you're worried about placing down tiles to score points, which honestly you should try and do both in this game. It is an abstract strategy game. This is literally all about trying to choose placement, use your tiles wisely, and mess with your opponent in certain ways that will prevent them from playing the tiles they want to play in certain areas. Don't give them openings and protect what's yours, protect what you want to play next. And it will work sometimes and sometimes it's not going to work. It really just depends on the tiles that are in the player's hand and whether or not they notice the different locations they can place to score bonus points in the game. It's a challenging game, it's a thoughtful game. People who like abstract strategy games that involve numbers, that involve matching, and similar to dominoes, are going to definitely enjoy Sum 8. If you're not an abstract fan, you won't like this game, I suppose. I don't have a whole lot of negatives to say about Sum 8 because honestly, this is a perfect domino style abstract strategy game that is something nuanced and different from those normal dominoes games that I have seen. And for players who enjoy that are going to dig this game. I know a lot of my family members, my aunts, uncles, my grandfather and grandmother who love dominoes. And this is a game I'm going to be giving them because I know that they're going to dig Sum 8. They're going to enjoy this new nuanced style of play uh, that's also similar in concept to a lot of the games they've played before as far as uh, matching and placing these tiles down, but also uniquely different as well. The only thing I'd like to see, really, is additional players. I want to see a three and a four player variant. Maybe they'll have that, maybe they won't, I'm not sure. And they also have a single player variant. I haven't tried that out, but I'm sure that my family members will when they take a look at this game. For me though, the two player game was excellent. If you like these type of games, this is something I would strongly suggest you take a look at. Some eight by Turnip Games. Check link down below in the description.
Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Sum 8. Like I said before, you know where to go. You can also go ahead and like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. Hit that subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this one, like Sum 8. In fact, we'll be playing this on our live stream so you can get a good chance of taking a look at the game and seeing how it is played, which will be cool for you guys that are interested in abstract games, want to know more, determine if this is something that you'll be interested in or not. You can also go ahead and check out our Patreon for $1 a month. It helps us create more content, helps us do our live streams and giveaways and whatnot. We have a couple of fun giveaways thing is now I've got to pull out here for this Sunday and uh, you'll, you'll get to probably see this game and another one. I'll have to make sure to check which ones are actually going to be up on the screen here with a lot of our returning guests and some new ones as well. Moonshellgame.com or unfilteredgames.com if you want to pick up a game of Moonshell, a mermaid game, which is kind of an abstract strategy game about placement. <laughs> it's my wife's game and she's got it out. we got some more copies left over if you're interested in picking them up on our website. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always I look forward to summing a total of eight with you next time.